Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to show you how to worm farm like the pros. So, we all know that a commercial scale operation, they tend to distill their process to eliminate anything unnecessary and to focus only on the good stuff, on what works. So, with that in mind, I'm going to take you with me to a local worm farm uh, commercial operation and we'll take a tour of it and you can see how they do it and then you can customize it to your own individual needs you're going to learn all kinds of good stuff here so make sure you give a thumbs up make sure you leave a comment and share your own experience and then at the very end of the video if you want to get some of these worm castings i've developed a way that you can get some Okay, my friends, we're going to the secret worm farm back in the cornfields of northern Indiana. So let us get into it and see what you can learn. Here we go. Hello, up, hello. Brother? How we doing? All right. Here at the worm farm. Welcome. Okay, first question. What is the right temperature for these worms? Their temperature range that they can tolerate is anywhere from 34 degrees to 96, 98 degrees Fahrenheit but they're much like us where they prefer to be in the 60s and the 70s is their ideal temperature. If you got your garage down at about 40, the worms really just slow down. Everything slows down. So they're gonna move slower, they're gonna eat less, they're gonna not reproduce uh, nearly as much, if not at all, at those temperatures. And then when uh, the conditions get more favorable for them, they will begin to wake up, process more food, and reproduce more. Next question, how do you build your commercial bins? So this is our current bin model. We think we're gonna stick with this for a while. This is probably our fourth or fifth iteration of our bins. And it's, it's very simple. It's just lumber and then NRP board. And that's just like waterproof plastic is all that is really. Our old bins, we didn't have NRP board in it at all in the the worms, the biology, you know, it wants to break things down. It wants to decompose things like wood. So it was starting to decompose a lot of our bins after just a year of having them. So we switched to this and put this barrier in place. Uh, the bins design is super simple. Like anyone can make these. Lots of holes drilled in the sides of these so that airflow can go through the bottom, through the sides over the top. Yeah, these have been really effective for us. We can just pick them up with the forklift. We can stack them on top of each other and uh, everything is nice, safe, and easy. So what do you feed these worms? What we're feeding them out here is quite simple, easy to obtain. You got horse manure and bedding. We got leaf litter just collected from the city cleanup in the fall. We got wood chips from any arborist. As long as they're not dyed and you let them age for a little bit, then you'll be fine. Um, and so what ratio do you uh, mix these three? So we mix this, these at a ratio of one to one for the leaf litter and the horse manure, and then half a part of the wood chips. And I don't see a whole lot of nitrogen here. What's the thinking behind that? Yeah, so out here with this part of our recipe, it is very high in carbon, and we do do that on purpose. That is primarily to encourage fungi to grow. The fungi eat more complex foods than the bacteria do, and high carbon foods tend to be a lot more complex. So this is more of a fungal food, and we do that on purpose. Uh, and, and so how, how is that proven to you that uh, your castings are of a higher fungal dominance? Well, we can actually just get that analyzed. There's a uh, soil food web consultants, they're trained my microscopist, and uh, they'll take our worm castings, they'll dilute them and put them under a microscope, and then actually look and count for the fungi, the bacteria, the protozoa, and nematodes. So we get an analysis back that says, hey, there is this much fungi inside your worm castings um, from this batch. So how can we start our own miniature worm farm? So when we start one of these bins, we, we start with that food source and we go a little bit heavier on the leaf litter and the horse manure and bedding. And we start with about a six inch layer of that bedding. And that is for the worms to just have a nice insulated layer that they can go up and down in easily. Okay, so this is a food source or a bedding? So this is both bedding and food sources are overlapping. But your food sources, if you have like a lot of kitchen waste or a lot of uh, produce waste, that stuff you want to mix with the bedding a lot. 
So for ours, it's a high carbon source. And for a home gardener, if you have your own colony of worms, then, and you wanna feed them food waste from your kitchen, you should be mixing it with something like this. You know, your, your leaf litter that you can easily access or your wood chips that you can easily access, shredded paper, shredded cardboard. Those are all great things to mix with the waste coming out of your kitchen. So what techniques should we use to maintain the bins? Okay, so how are you keeping the pests out of these? Yeah, so covering your bins is really important for keeping down flies and gnats and other pests. We use a bubble wrap, a black bubble wrap, so that helps uh, reduce the amount of light that gets through because the worms don't like the light, but then also the bubbles help with the airflow and uh, it locks in the moisture. So we're just keeping conditions that are favorable for the worms and not so favorable for gnats or flies because obviously they like to fly around, right? So if you keep it covered, they don't have the atmosphere to fly around in. Now, of all the things that you've tried, you've found this bubble wrap is the best, and why is that o over cardboard or carpet or something? Yeah, yeah, if all you have is cardboard or carpet, it'll work, um, but we found that bubble wrap is the best for us because it's easy to roll up and get off to the side, and then it also allows the airflow between the bubbles uh, to continue to flow across the whole of the bin and uh, really just comes back around to keeping things as oxygenated as possible. Before we started using covers on our bins, our, our food that we were feeding was just drying out at the surface. And once it dries out, the worms can't ingest it and process it. So once we started using the bubble wrap covers, we locked in that moisture and retained the air. And uh, the stuff will just get eaten up over the course of multiple days without drying out. And it's a lot better. Okay, so now how do we extract these castings? So if somebody built this at home, how would they harvest the worm castings? Yeah, so if you're doing this at home, uh, the easiest thing to do is really just to feed your worms and let them consume all the material that's already in the bin and then introduce m new food in a corner. And those worms will migrate. Over the course of a day or two, 80, 90% of your worms are going to migrate over to that fresh food and start feeding on it. And that is gonna mean the rest of your bin is gonna be pretty low in worms. And at that point, you can just pitchfork or remove that material and use it as you please in your garden. Yeah, so if you get all your worms to migrate over to the corner or the vast majority of your worms to migrate over in the corner uh, to this fresh food, you can just take that fresh food and the little bit of material underneath it out and put it in a new bin or put it off to the side take all the other stuff out of your bin to utilize and then restart that same bin. Just put that mound of worms and that food back in there. That is how I recommend the home gardener do it. That's just the easiest, simplest way to do it without trying to sift anything out. Uh, but us here, we have access to some other equipment. We built some stuff. So this is how we harvest on a commercial scale. So, so what are we actually looking at here? Is, is this soil or what, what is it? Is there no, it's, it's not soil at all. This is, our, this is the wood chips, the leaf litter, the horse manure and bedding. This is those things that have been fed to the worms through time. They're going through with the assistance of all the microbes and breaking it down. And it's just layer after layer after layer of that food. So it, it looks like soil, but you're really looking at worm castings. So this is solid worm castings, what I'm holding right here. This is solid worm castings, yeah. So what should we look for in good worm castings? So it's got that nice cocoa color that's what we're after we don't want super super dark this means it's got a lot of humic acid a lot of fulvic acids in it the moisture level's right it'll crumble in your hand you see in there that there was uh cocoons so our sifting doesn't separate these out because we use a larger screen than some producers use so we don't get the super super fine worm castings but that's on purpose because or after the biology in it. And the fungi, if you use the really fine screens, like an eighth inch mesh screen, 
that is actually doing more harm to the fungi than a bigger screen size. So we're retaining more fungi using the bigger screen size. So there you go, my friends. That is exactly how you can do it yourself at home. But if you would like to purchase some of these exact worm castings, you can do that. There's a link in the description to the website, which is backtoearthworks.com. This is my buddy's business. So go to the website, check out all the information that he has. Tons of useful information about earthworms, the soil food web, everything. And if you would like to purchase one of the kits that he's designed for you guys, then you can do that. Use the, garden, or use the code GARDENVIKING for 25% off. Okay? So give the video a thumbs up and I will see you right here Saturday, 12 noon for the live Q&A.